Okay, so next up we look at the hyperbola and its graph. Okay, and uh, the basic function formula for a hyperbola would look like this. Okay, a over x minus p plus q. So the most basic one we get is when a is equal to 1, p is equal to 0, and q is equal to 0. So that will just give us this this shape here. Now remember what we said before is that any function has two things. It's got shape and position. Okay, now this value determines the shape and these two values determines the position. Okay, so how does it determine? Well, first of all, we get two kinds of shapes. Okay, if A is a positive number, then our basic shape would look like this. It would look like this. There and there. And you'll notice that what does it do? It seems to be tending towards these lines. And these lines might look like the axis, like the x-axis and the y-axis, but they are actually the asymptotes. This is a horizontal asymptote, and what an asymptote is, is it is a line that your graph tends to, but it never reaches. And this one is the vertical asymptote, a line that the graph is tending to, but it never actually reaches it. If this is when A is positive, what if a is negative? I can have that a might be negative and then my graph will have this shape. On the negative side of the x-axis we will be on the positive side of the y-axis. a is positive, oh, sorry negative. And on the positive side of the x-axis my curve is on the negative side of the y-axis. Okay, so it's either these two or those two together. That is the shape. Now, what is the, that, that's now the, the sign of A. So if A is positive, this sign, A negative, that sign. But what about the size of A? So if A is like larger or smaller, well, that determines how close it is to this point. How close it is to that point. And the smaller a becomes the closer we get to this point so let me draw another one here if I for example if a gets is, is smaller it's kind of being drawn into that point like a black hole or if a is larger it is a little bit further away from that point. And on this side it is just the mirror image of whatever is that that side is doing. This distance here is the same as that distance there. Okay, and that is what the size of A will do. Let's look at the negative side. If A gets smaller it gets sucked closer here to the center and when A is larger it that little point will be a little bit further away from this center line. Okay, so that's the shape. Okay, how about position? Well, we're going to look at this point. In other words, the intersection of the uh, horizontal and the vertical axis. That is going to the point that we're going to move around. In other words, that's going to determine the position. So if we look at those two coordinates, P and Q, P being the X coordinate, and Q being the Y coordinate, they will form the X and the Y coordinate of this point. So if this is the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote will be X equal to P, and the horizontal asymptote will be Y equal to Q. So that this point right there would be the point P comma Q.
Q. Now, why is that the case? Well, we know that the vertical asymptote is a line, or the, um, a line that the graph tends to but never reaches. Why doesn't it ever reach that line? Well, let's look at an example to explain. So, if I have that fx is equal to 1 over x minus 2 plus 3, then I see that the value of p is equal to 2. So a is equal to 1, p is equal to 2, and q is equal to 3. So I can see that x equal to 2 is the vertical asymptote. So at 1, 2, there's the vertical asymptote. And uh, the horizontal asymptote is at q equal to 3. So 1, 2, 3. There we go. And then I see here is this set of axes. Now I have the position. Finally, just the shape is that positive 1. And that makes that I am going to go through here and through here. Now here I'm going to have x and y intercepts. So um, I'm going to have to calculate those x and y intercepts. But that's not the purpose of this video. I just want to show you why is this p value, this value, why is that the horizontal intercept? Well, it's the line, this line, my graph never reaches because x is not allowed to be equal to 2 because then I'm going to have 0 in my denominator. I'm not allowed to have 0 in my denominator, so x may not equal 2. That means as the graph tends to it, it swerves away and if, as it comes from the top it does the same thing, it just goes to, to the positive side. Same thing with this 3 that is the value that y can never be equal to. y cannot be equal to 3 because this fraction can never equal 0. Let's quickly have a look at why that is so.